This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculously fast. Oh my god! <laughs> comes on boost and it just wants to take off into space! Let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen. When I go down, I go down spectacular. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to a special episode of Yammy Noob. And today we are out here with the Pan America in the middle of the Mojave Desert because Harley Davidson saw the videos we made of the Pan Am and Sturgis and thought I sucked real bad and needed to come get schooled on how to ride a big bike off road. So that is exactly what we are gonna do today. And if you wanna ride a big bike like this off road or you just wanna watch me drop it a whole bunch, stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Now we are out here with the Pan America at the location that they have been training all of their dealers at who are selling these motorcycles. They wanted to bring them out here to make sure that they knew what they were selling, which is actually really cool. It's kind of similar to what Royal Enfield does where their C-suite executives have to go ride their motorcycles. It's awesome that the dealers have to come out here, ride these bikes and experience them in their element because you can't really sell a motorcycle like this unless you've actually ridden it off-road. Now, speaking of off-road riding, today is all about learning how to handle a big motorcycle off-road. Now, if you've spent any time on dirt bikes or dual sports, you might see something like this and you're like, that's not meant to go off-road. But literally, Harley in their paperwork says that it is designed for full send. So we are going to test that today. We are going to go do a lot of cool adventure tech stuff, all the technical skills that you need to develop to learn how to really ride a motorcycle with 150 horsepower off-road. Because remember, this is a motorcycle making 150 horsepower and 94 foot-pounds of torque, which is a big change from Harley-Davidson. And if you've seen my videos on this platform before, you know I am a big fan of what this motorcycle is doing. But I rode it just as a complete noob. The first time I got on this motorcycle and took a big adventure bike off-road was Sturgis. So this is my second time on this bike. And uh, we're gonna go see exactly how bad I suck at riding off-road. Let's get into it. It should be uh, very entertaining for y'all and probably a little bit painful for me. Alrighty everybody, we have reached the halfway point of the day. Everybody is out doing some tracking shots or getting themselves some lunch. And I figured I would take some time to talk about the stuff that we've done since it's been hard to actually get in and do some uh, serious hardcore vlogging while, while I'm trying to learn all this stuff. So we started the day off by working on just simply moving the motorcycle around, which it doesn't sound like that's something that you need to practice, but again, you gotta remember that this is a big motorcycle, and so it is worth finding that friction zone and experiencing it with just two fingers, because the more you can just actuate these levers with a little bit of pressure, nice, calm, cool, collected, and controlled, while you're off the bike, you can work on practicing it while you're on the bike. Then we moved on and did some braking stuff, which I actually was able to do some good vlogging sections for, just talking your, my way through how this bike breaks, and I'm actually gonna show you some of that right now. Alrighty guys, we are heading out to do some braking drills on this here Pan America. Basically doing a little bit of skidding, and a little bit of ABS stopping, and all that good stuff. All right, remember, you're gonna have your weight back, you're gonna keep your eyes up. When he drops his hand, you stomp that rear brake and you keep it on, you don't let up until the bike comes to a complete stop, put your foot down. Sounds good. All right. Yep. All right, you didn't pull your clutch in, that's how chain the bike died. Yep. So make sure you just lean back. Roger that. Well, apparently it helps doing this drill if you uh, if you pull in that clutch, because I'm, you know, kind kind of an idiot about all this stuff. So not being an idiot helps, but you know, we're out here learning. Come to complete stop. Keep your 
if, as soon as you hit your brake, you look down. Gotcha. So keep your eyes up. Keep your eyes up like on the coach. Wait back a little bit. It'll be perfect. Okay. Have fun. Will do. Yeah. Good. You can feel that ABS. I mean, the, the lack of ABS. Yeah. Lack of ABS. Yeah. Good. So turn around and just park right behind him. Will do. Alrighty, so third time was the charm there. Uh, it's not difficult. Um, it's all about confidence, man. Chutzpah. But we got a couple more braking drills to go. So the uh, the skiddies, skiddies were fun, but now we're officially out of off-road plus. And we we're going to start playing with the rear wheel ABS. So uh, perhaps the fun with skiddies is done. Which is a bummer, because skiddies are fun. Isn't that why we play off-road? Now one thing I didn't get to really vlog on because I was really focused, and actually it made me a little bit nervous to go do, was to test the front brake ABS on this off-road. Uh, it's so counterintuitive to think I need to grab the absolute bejesus out of this lever uh, but they really wanted us to not to, to just go hell for leather, pull the literally the lever to the bar, and just see what happens. And the crazy thing is, on this motorcycle, it's so sophisticated that I didn't even feel the ABS working, which it's like some black magic sorcery. I have never really tested it front wheel ABS. I've just always trust that it works. Like on my supermoto, on any other motorcycle I've ridden. I really try not to actuate that front wheel ABS. I try to not ride like I need it, but it makes a big difference in your stopping power off-road. And I am thoroughly impressed by how stable and confidence inspiring it was because you literally, you don't feel any chatter out of the wheel. It's, you can tell it's working, sort of, but isn't that kind of the point? You want something that's not intrusive and it makes you feel like a superhero. You know, the back wheel still does the chattering thing, but the front, totally smooth. It was really kind of shocking. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the highlight of my day so far, and that's learning to turn this motorcycle at slow speeds. I was able to get some really good footage of that, so why don't we cut over and see what a couple hours ago Spite was working on when he was learning to turn this motorcycle. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are out here on the one where I probably I'm going to drop the bike with the most gusto. Uh, we are doing super duper slow speed controlled slalom, uh, essentially. Um, and we're using our weight to counterbalance the bike. And this is one technique that I am not comfortable with necessarily. I haven't really done it before. So we're doing, we're doing something a little bit different. All right, so we're keeping the speed down, and we are going to basically just run with clutch control all the way through this slalom there and back. Uh, and the idea being that we're, yeah, let's see here, I'm going to do that. Got it. Bars towards the cone, body away. So that just feels very foreign because it's not how you're turning on the street. It's super different. I think I gotta do more. Yeah, there we go, all right. Exaggerate that motion a little bit more. Really exaggerate that motion. So, we're going to do this way. And then keep it going. And then go through. There we go. Okay, that felt good. I don't know, it feels sort of natural once you get used to it. It's that it's you're pointing your body in a different way than you're pointing the bars. 
which is so counterintuitive. But you can really, really feel the difference. Man, you can crawl this bike really nice and slow. Alright, that, that's feeling that's feeling pretty good. Let's go back for lap two and see if we can't keep it up. Shade Tree and I got a little bit of a bet. Somebody owes the other person a beer, whoever goes down first. But the beers are free, so it's not really a punishment. Alright, so I'm gonna try and walk you through what I'm doing this lap here. Just so you can get a feel for the thought process because I think I've got it down pat now so I've got my feet on the pegs uh, really kind of buckled in which is really nice on the Pan America you can really get this you can get great foot purchase on this motorcycle there's old Mr. Surgeon doing some work over there all right here we go dip it over move the weight out dip it back catch with the knee Keep that head up though, I'm lowering my head a bit. Now everybody keeps telling me that these motorcycles are no good off-road because they're so heavy and so hard to turn. But in the stuff that I was doing out there, I was able to turn it like two miles an hour, even a little bit faster. I was able to flick side to side. The turn in side to side on this motorcycle is so beyond what I thought it was capable of doing. You think these motorcycles aren't, you know, they're going to be kind of lumbering and ponderous side to side, but it was super quick to turn in and it was so easy and so stable that I was actually able to take the handlebars to lock while I was turning. Uh, that was, it, I said in the vlog, it felt like it was leveling up as soon as I learned that. It was like, ding, grats, woo, I'm now ADV boy plus two. You know, it was it was seriously impressive getting out and trying that out. Now we're getting ready to head back out and do some more practice on this motorcycle. So let's see what else we have for the rest of the day. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to morning number two out here at Zakar. And uh, I lost the light yesterday, so we had to wrap this up the next day because we were out there having fun. We actually went on a little bit of a ride down the highway to go see the Red Rocks before the sun set. So I wasn't able to get a good wrap up done, but I'm doing it now for you. So let's start out with what happened right after lunch. We did a variation on our turning drills where we basically did some tight 180 degree turns that got tighter as they went. And that was a cool thing to practice because, you know, every now and again, you get stuck out in a place where you have to do a really tight turn to get out of a no-no situation and it's really nice to be able to manage this motorcycle in a tight space. It can be tough with big heavy bikes like this to manage them on, you know, not quite single track, but anywhere where it gets really tight and narrow, you start to feel the weight on this bike. So it was good to practice in that slow speed condition. Now, while that one wasn't as inspiring because it was more of an advanced version of what we had done before lunch, the next thing we did was going over some descents and ascents up some tabletops, and that was a ton of fun. We also hit some whoops, which, I mean, that's where you start getting into the real ADV boy stuff. That's what everybody says they're out doing. They're going boosting their bike over some whoops, which you'll see in a minute that I actually accidentally boosted this motorcycle pretty good over some whoops. Um, Whiskey throttle's a real thing on a bike with 150 horsepower, but before we get there, the main thing that I learned here was it's so okay to just trust the front end on this motorcycle because goddamn did Harley put a great front brake on this and the ABS it just works a treat. So when you're going over some big ledge and you're like, oh goddamn, it just disappears, it's like a cliff, you can really just trust the front brake on this machine. And it'll get you through it. And that's a big ask on a bike that weighs, again, 560, 570 pounds. And then even more with my big ass sitting on the back of it. Then we got over to the whoops. And, you know, that's that's just, you got to go real fast through it, right? Get some air and all that good stuff, which I wasn't intending to, but I did. And I whiskey throttled it. Take a look. So yeah, I got a little bit zesty on the throttle with this motorcycle, but uh, I managed to not drop it. I almost yeeted myself real good, 
But I saved that for last because we went to the sand pit next and that, if you recall our vlogs from Utah, was probably the biggest and toughest part of that experience. We had to go out to the Grand Canyon, the north rim of the Grand Canyon, to film some stuff. And uh, it was like seven, eight, nine miles of just straight heavy sand that we had to go through once and then another time to get out. And that sand was brutal. And they taught me a couple of things to help get me through. But these guys here were able to help refine my skills a little bit more. And I was able to get through that sand pit once, just fine. I went through another sand pit, a little different, also fine. And then the third time, I got super overconfident, and this happened. <laughs> Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. When I go down, I go down spectacular. <laughs> Look at the fucking handlebars. God damn. So yeah, I biffed this motorcycle real good. So much so that the front end came off here, this panel here. Uh, I tweaked the handlebars really good. The clutch lever is bent. The brake lever is bent. Um, it's, uh, it's a little worse for wear. Um, I will say, I think it held up a little bit better than the BMW, though. But that's besides the point. The biggest thing about this whole experience out here was actually learning with a coach who's watching what you're doing and can actually tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. And a lot of times when you go out to experience the dirt for the first time or second time or third time or whatever, you're just intuiting your way through it. You're like, this feels okay. This feels natural. I'm going pretty fast. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. But the main thing that you gotta do is there's a lot of skills that you're not even thinking about that uh, you're just doing wrong. You're trying to adapt street riding to the dirt and that just doesn't work. And we all started out the day as unconscious incompetence where we needed to, we didn't know what we didn't know. You know, I had a little bit more of a leg up because I had spent some time on this motorcycle before. But then we got to the point where we actually were able to think about what we wanted to do and do it, which they called conscious competence. Now that next stage is unconscious incompetence where it's all muscle memory. You don't even have to think about what you're doing anymore. And that is going to require a whole bunch of practice. So much like track riding or even street riding, you gotta get out and you gotta practice these techniques on these motorcycles, especially these big heavy ones, because it makes a huge difference in the way that they handle and it makes it so much easier and a whole lot less exhausting. So if you're at all interested in trying out one of these big bikes off-road, I highly recommend finding yourself somebody who can teach you some tricks of the trade and watch what you're doing. Alrighty guys, now it is time for us to head out for a big day's ride on this motorcycle using the skills that we learned yesterday. So I'm gonna sign off. A big thank you to Harley Davidson for flying me out to Zakar here in the Mojave Desert to learn all these skills on this awesome motorcycle. And uh, I'm gonna go enjoy it for a whole nother day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yamino. Yeah,